During a recent visit to Dubai and after a hands-on session on the Indosequence Express instrumentation and obturation technique, I met one of the course participants who was a local user of the bioceramic sealer. Dr. Saif Najm is a talented young dentist limiting his practice to endodontics and restorative dentistry. He had switched to the bioceramic obturation technique four months earlier and showed me some of his cases in his office with Dr. Ahab that in the Jumeirah area of uh, Dubai that I wanted to share with you. So uh, just uh, to begin, uh, Dr. Zayf, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Terrific. So let's get to it immediately and get okay. started. The first case that you have here is a young, uh, a 12 year old uh, patient. 11 years old. 11 actually. years old, yeah. exactly. Uh, he presents with mobility in mm -hmm. his teeth. Yeah. Uh, in his tooth, sorry. Um, the mandibular the, first molar, obviously. Yeah, right? yeah. Right. Uh, with a big lesion, there is a perioendo lesion, as you see here, mm -hmm. involving the bifurcation area. Yeah. So it was hard to decide to to treat this to to go for treatment or no. Well, by like my my colleague, the doctor had, he's an implantologist, mm -hmm. so he cheered me up to treat this tooth. Yeah, clearly okay. on an eleven-year-old patient, it's very difficult to yeah. do implants. As, as you see here, it's a yeah. not fully formed. Yeah, I yeah. fixed there. So we went and we treated this tooth, as you can see in the next slide. Sure, but let me just quickly mention here that you have, uh, you know, tremendous amount. You have purple involvement. You have this is clearly it should have been a necrotic tooth, right, from the diagnosis. Yeah, yeah. The diagnosis is necrosis. By the way, this patient, sorry, uh, this patient, uh, he initiated the, the indo treatment mm -hmm. one year ago, mm -hmm. and from the history, uh, the doctor just put an uh, an uh, cotton pellet with antibiotic paste, something like this. Okay, and he sealed the the, the tooth with uh, something like a temporary uh, filling. Right. Okay. Right. So it's a previously initiated case yeah. about a year ago that the patient never kind of followed up to complete the case. Sure. And the, the clinical case apparently here is on the first visit, you can see there's a, a sinus, uh, tract sinus tract on the lingual side and there is uh, probing and uh, you have 7 and 8 millimeter on the buccal side. That's true. And, and uh, lots of mobility from what you said yes. too. Yeah. And uh, after isolation, I, uh, we wanted just to relieve the pain because uh, he, pre uh, he came with the swelling, extra swelling and uh, a pain went, uh, on biting, so mm -hmm. we opened the tooth, we took out the the cotton pellet that they put on irrigated. From a year ago, a yeah. nice little cotton pellet yeah. uh, in and there from a year ago and irrigated it, completely set them up chlorate, a little bit of so instrumentation and so yes, on. Yes, yes. And then, and then uh, uh, provisional with GI and send the patient home after two days, you can see there's uh, the, the coronal area, the marginal area of the gingiva appears like it's uh, actually settled down so, a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Um, you know, so that's just a temporary kind of a isolation and dressing it's in the like tube. It's like an emergency. The emergency, for yeah. the emergency pay, uh, visit, you just went in there and did some that's cleaning right. and disinfection inside the canal and uh, with the dressing and then the patient kind of came back here. Yes. And the, what I'm doing is uh, before starting any, uh, any endo treatment, just as late that too, because as you know, there's no endo mm -hmm. without rubber dam. Of course, okay? yeah. And uh, after I applied my clamp with the rubber dam, I disinfect the rubber dam as well. Dam. I can see. Yes. Very nice and clean, using alcohol to basically clean the, uh, yes. the space. That's the really two cool. and the, 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 the rubber, uh, yeah. the rubber dam. Uh, uh, you know what? I, I don't want to reinfect the tooth. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. Uh, and uh, the most important point here, to change the glass after you apply the rubber dam because mm -hmm. you don't need to enter saliva inside the tooth again and so on. Yeah, so. you're absolutely right. I mean, these are these are the aseptic controls that you can do to very uh, quickly and easily increase your success rate by making sure that the whole goal of endodontic therapy is to control the microbes and remove the microbes from inside the tooth and not add any more by uh, having a poor uh, aseptic technique through um, uh, through leakage around the rubber dam or contamination with gloves and other <coughs> things. So I can see here uh, you've gone inside the tooth, you've done your uh, instrumentation, you've cleaned yeah. up uh, completely, and you've obturated here using the hydraulic the condensation. The man with uh, by the way, this is my first case with BCC. This sealer. is your first yeah. case with BCC. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's terrific. Um, I had to choose a case that you know, really didn't have to be easy, right? <laughs> so. Um, I can see that you have got a percha all over the floor of the uh, chamber. Um, so how did you do that to cover all the BC sealer so that you can actually have a nice dry area? Actually, it's just to cut it higher. 
right. one millimeter, and then uh, with heat, right. just condense it. Yeah. On the floor. So basically, it's a great uh, trick in order to get rid of that rim of sealer around the gutta percha. If you cut at one or two millimeters higher using heat, then that two millimeter uh, button of gutta percha above the floor of the uh, uh, at the orifice level can act as just melted gutta percha that you could then pack using yeah. a thick plugger, like a size 10 plugger, ten. and you end up getting a nice uh, uh, flow of the material up there. And I can see then following the obturation, you have some glass ionomer. Yeah, the glass ionomer. And recall the patient. Yeah, this is your cone fit here. Yes. And uh, then you kind of fill. This is actually simply just injecting the sealer inside the. the I only inject. Uh, I wanted to try the flowability of this material. Yeah. Okay. If I can control it in the apex. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's like you are uh, taking a system B and injecting with your gun. Gun. Uh -huh. Yeah, all, the squirt technique. The, yeah. 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 So this is just the sealer inside the canal. It looks like it's already full. Yeah. But, uh, you yeah. know, it's a very. Just to kind of be clear again, this is a very advanced method of using it. You use a microscope, therefore you can see what you're doing. But we certainly every world and do not recommend people don't have a scope and don't know what they're doing to inject directly because this is a situation which could end up getting a quick overfill. And especially here with the infraavular nerve and so on, it could be very dangerous with any material. Um, so this is, um, you have, have control and probably some practice and experience yeah. uh, externally. Uh, you know, previously to see how much you inject, and you control it pretty well to the apex. So after this, then you place the cones in yes, there. Yes, uh, yeah. smaller size. Small size cone. Okay, cone. And, and so. then I uh, put my GI and send yeah. the patient home. Here we are. This is so this is final. the immediate post yeah. half of the fill, um, and clearly, as you can see, that there is a um, that you've managed to fill all the way to the apex. There's a little bit of a puff out both the end of the canals, but that's uh, not a problem. The material is very biocompatible. And then what you ended up doing is you filled the tooth and the patient followed up. I think you said there was some mobility with this tooth, so you ended up yeah. also afterwards uh, to kind of uh, splint the tooth yes. uh, a little bit to make sure that the, the yeah, second bond molar bonded actually. to the tooth yes. behind yes. it. Yes. And here's after mere four, four months. months. So four months. After Sorry. four months, yeah. it's amazing how much bone refill you've had in Even this if area. You, uh, if you notice here the alveolar process, maybe I was lucky by uh, these teeth, the 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 premolar, uh, was erupting. Yeah. Maybe it's yeah. took the alveolar process yeah. with it. Yeah. And you, if you see here the bifurcation area, yeah. it's totally filled there with the bone and. The yeah, apex. that's very incredible. I mean, so it's, it's kind of so funny because it seems like it's serendipitous to have the premolar erupt right adjacent to this tooth because it's almost a form of forced eruption, yeah. which brings up, you do uh, prior to implants, by bringing up the bone. So you had a combination of having uh, this kind of forced eruption, it could have even been like, you know, distracting yes. osteogenesis or whatever, but it's like incredible amount of bone and stability in a mere four months of following, yeah. following this. So yes. as usual, we always say in these cases, the key here is that you have used a, a good judgment in terms of your instrumentation, done a great Rotation. job with disinfection, and removing your uh, uh, your uh, uh, potential biofilm here, and that's why, and then having a biocompatible material here allowed you to kind of uh, bond and fill at the same time. So that's terrific. It's a great job. Uh, so this is the pre, and this is the post, and I can see that, that the incredible amount of uh, change in mere four months. If you can see the date there, 29 June, yeah, 2015, and 28 10, 2015. Yeah, that's great. So let's go on to the next case quickly.